Hey everybody, Keith Hilson at the Cron Bone Shop at Schmidt Music here. Wanted to do another quick maintenance video um, and talking about uh, valves again. Last time I did a maintenance video on rotor valves, how to, how to maintain them, how to get them lubricated up. Today I'm going to take a look at the Thayer or the Axial Flow Valve. After the rotary valve, this is the most common valve design that we see in trombones. And so just like the rotary valve, there, you know, it doesn't necessarily take more maintenance. You have to do a little more often, but as far as where you actually have to get lubricated, it's not really all that different. We just have to get it in a few different spots. One of the big differences with the axial flow valve, the Thayer design, versus the rotary valve, is we actually have a couple of different surfaces we have to worry about, about the inside of the valve. So with our standard rotary valve, we just have pretty much just the round exterior where it sits in the casing. With the uh, axial flow design, we have both the top of the valve, the flat top, and then we have the conical um, side of the valve as well. We need to get lubrication on both of those, which means that we're going to put oil in two different spots. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to take off my F tuning slide here. Now when we do this, anytime we remove the uh, tubing from our, whether it's F, attachment, G flat, whichever, uh, we want to make sure that we depress the valve. And the reason for that is at least if the valve is in good shape, it should be a fairly airtight component. And if we start pulling the valve, the tubing out without depressing the valve, we're going to create a vacuum in there. Um, and depending on how strong that vacuum is, sometimes it actually can cause damage. At the very least, it's going to make it much more difficult to pull the tuning slide out. So I'm going to depress my trigger and I am going to slowly pull my valve out. One of the things that we find with a lot of the newer tuning slides is that they are fairly tight. Now, that's not necessarily a bad problem, but it does mean you have to use a little bit of careful force in pulling them out. So, there's our F attachment slide out. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use our rotor oil. Again, the rotor oil is what we're going to use on the inside, the very thin, lightweight oil, especially with the axial flow design because of how much surface area is involved. We usually recommend using a pretty lightweight oil. Again, in this case, I'm using the Hetman light rotor oil. And so first off, I'm going to send the oil right down through here. This is going to land on the top of the uh, surface of the valve. And in this case, we don't have to actually touch anything at all. At this point, the valve is actually sitting in the way of the, uh, the tubing here. And so we're going to let it sit it run, uh, run down for a second. And then we're just going to work it around like so, just like that. Perfect. So that is hopefully taking the oil spreading around all around the top of the valve here. Now the other area we need to get some lubrication on is the side of the valve. And we're going to do that through this tubing right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some oil and we're going to send it right down through there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to slowly twist the bell section to help guide the oil down here. So the oil is running down here now. We're going to turn it like this so the oil is running down here. And then we're going to kind of, I always like to twist it a little bit so it runs down here. And then finally, like so. In this case now, the oil should have impacted the surface of the valve. And the same thing, we're just going to go through and activate the valve back and forth, getting the oil spread all around there. So one of the big differences between the axial flow and a lot of the other valve designs is there's a lot of surface area involved. So not only do we need to get enough lubrication in, you know, generally with most valves, I don't think you can really over oil. The biggest thing that'll happen is that you're going to end up with a little bit extra oil in your hand, hopefully not on your clothes. But, um, you know, as far as like the actual valve itself, you can't really over oil it, especially with the axial flow design. We want to get a lot of lubrication in there. Uh, make sure we're really spreading that all over the place. So that is the inside of the valve. Now, just like with any other valve design, we do have an outside component of the valve to worry about. So in this case, we have our valve shaft sitting on top of the valve. And here again, we're going to use our bare new linkage oil and we're going to put some oil right down in our little gap here, just like so. And we're going to work it through. A lot of times when we have issues with an axial flow valve, it's not moving as well as we want. You know, some, the issue is as much with the shaft right here not being lubricated as the actual rest of the valve. And so if you are having some issues with it, after making sure you get some oil inside of here, check your lubrication up on top there. Sometimes that can fix that issue. And then same thing, just like with any other valve where we have these mechanical linkages, just want to put a little bit of oil on all of our little ball joints. Same thing on our trigger assembly 
right there. So with a lot of valve designs, for example, a standard rotary valve design, I usually recommend lubricating it once a month or so. Again, because of the surface area involved with the axial flow, just to keep everything moving well for you, I usually recommend once a week or so. You know, it takes a little bit more, but at the same time, it only takes a minute or two to take some oil, drop it down inside. It's really going to help make sure that you don't have any issues down the road, help prevent excess wear and tear, help prevent any link, leakage issues, keep that valve moving well, working well for you for years to come. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, please feel free to leave them below in the comment section. Uh, if you haven't done so already, think about giving us a like on this video. I'd appreciate it. And if you haven't done so, think about subscribing to our channel. Again, it gives us inspiration to create more of these videos, helps you kind of get involved with the little community that we're trying to do. And feel free to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as well. Thanks for watching.